September 1870. The Yellowstone region, Wyoming Territory. The Washburn expedition set out on their perilous journey into this uncharted region with incredible tales ringing in their ears. Mountain men of the likes of Jim Bridger were known to embellish their tales when faced with gullible listeners, but this time they had told of such incredible sights that were incapable of imagining. They told stories of huge fountains of scalding hot water, of hot springs, and mud pools, of fabulous wildlife, of a huge inland sea, and waterfalls of the like never seen before. Imagine the wonder in the eyes of these brave explorers when they saw that indeed the tales were true. Imagine as well the dangers they faced from unknown terrain, from extreme weather, from wild animals, and from savage Indians. But these very ordinary men were determined to find something truly special. They certainly did that. Nathaniel Pitt Langford was aged 25 when he made this trip. He'd ventured into the mountains before as a sickly former bank clerk in search of better health and quality of life. This had sparked his enthusiasm for the wild places and he was desperate to join this expedition. It fell to him, some 35 years after the Washburn expedition took place, to publish a journal of their adventures. The journal makes fascinating reading, especially as it describes the exploration of the Grand Canyon of the Yellowstone. We are left in no doubt that this was a very special day in the life of Nathaniel Pitt Langford. Of the canyon, he says, The place where I obtained the best and most terrible view was a narrow projecting point, situated two or three miles below the lower fall. As I took in the scene, I realised my own littleness, my inability to cope with or even comprehend the mighty architecture of nature. but it was the falls that had the greatest effect on him. The two grand falls of the Yellowstone form a fitting completion to this stupendous climax of wonders. They impart life, power, light and majesty to an assemblage of elements which without them would be the most gloomy and horrible solitude in nature. Imagine seeing these sights as they did, from exposed cliff faces, rather than from the safety of railed walkways and observation platforms as we do today. Now that would be awe inspiring. Regrettably, they had no photographer with them, so all they could bring home were a number of crude sketches, and in Langford's words, a lingering in my memory like the faintly defined outlines of a dream. But they brought home much more than this. Discussion around their last night campfire, on this very spot, heralded the birth of a new dream, and out of this expedition came the seeds for the establishment of Yellowstone National Park, the world's very first national park, and a determination to protect these amazing natural wonders for the enjoyment of all the peoples of the world.